slightly self-aggrandizing intro there, but I thought it would be a good way to celebrate the news for AMC on its first profitable quarter since 2019, and also get the chance to show off some of the tools and things I'm learning with this new program. But enough of that, let's focus in on Q2 AMC earnings. What is there to say? It was a tiny, small $8 million profit, but hey, it's still a, still a win. Um, so my warning, and, and we'll get into it here as I talk, is that um, I wouldn't get too caught up in this just yet. Remember, Q2 is usually the best quarter of the year, and I don't see the rest of the year having the, the final two quarters of the year being profitable quarters, and Adam Aaron's projection is still 2024 to 2025, and I'll get more into that part of it towards the end of the video. What I wanted to do was focus on some key highlights, not so much about the financials, because really, much like what they say uh, in sports, it's really hard to find lessons in, in a win. It's a lot harder. It's a it's a lot easier to find lessons in a loss, and when when you have a, a, a better than expected quarter, it's a lot harder to pick at the financials. And really, mostly what I want to focus on is the plan that they seem to have going forward, these uh, the different things that Adam Aaron talked about that the company would like to, would like to do going forward, and leave the financials as they are right now because yes there are still issues going forward there are still concerns they should not be understated in fact Adam Aaron points out a few of them but I'd rather focus more on what is it that AMC plans to do um, considering that they, they had a profitable quarter uh, for the first time in, in four years so um, I, I'd rather leave that as it is and we can focus on some of these things that we can learn from that were talked about in the earnings call. The first big thing that I do really like about this earnings call is how it's very much in contrast to say GameStop. And I know there is a big feud between the two meme stock groups between GameStop and AMC. And I think both their CEOs have traits I like and dislike. Ryan Cohen's big one that I don't like is that he's he, he he has a bunch of people in his inner circle. He keeps everything tight to the best and he doesn't talk about anything about the company. Whereas Adam Aaron is a glad hander and that, that works great for him as a promoter. But <laughs> I mean, when you talk about stuff like say Highcroft or some of these things that he's done, he's a glad hander. He sells people on things and sometimes those things aren't so great. But what is really good about it is, is we have a clear picture here in, with AMC as to what Adam Aaron wants to do as opposed to GME where, and GameStop where we're still just kind of like in the dark uh, as to what they plan to do with that company and that's that's what I one of the things I do like about AMC I, I have a clear picture I know what the company goals are I know what they're trying to do another key point from this earnings call is three times in this entire earnings call Adam Aaron mentioned their liquidity issues First, on liquidity. We've made many public statements throughout this year and again in recent weeks that AMC has skillfully charted our way through turbulent waters at a time when several of our most important competitors failed and that we watch our liquidity position very closely. We've made it clear that our strategy first is to survive and then to thrive. But despite that medium-term confidence, in the short term, and some of you don't like to hear this, but in the short term, AMC has some serious liquidity issues to solve. To make sure we get there, and you've been hearing me say this as a broken record for two years now, but especially in the last year, we must be able to raise capital if we need to. Uh, because the dumbest thing we could ever do as a company is run out of cash. 
Now we can dispute how long or how far that AMC will need to continue to make equity offerings to keep the company going forward. My personal thought is it's going to go on until at least 2025. And like I said, I'll, I'll get to that in a second more clearly, but it's, it's very clear that Adam Aaron understands and he's trying to get those that aren't on board with this plan to understand that there is going to need to be continued equity raises and that is going to turn people off and there's no getting around that because it's either that or bankruptcy so um, it's kind of the catch-22 that AMC investors have been in for a long time now and you're either going to be on board with that decision or you're not and as I've stated in the past I am one of those people that would not be on board with that and I would rather wait for the time when AMC no longer has to do those to get invested into the company. My next uh, key point is the small gripe with talking about how impressed he was with the popcorn sales but not particularly being very specific about them nor did they have their own break off in the financial documents that were provided by the company and it may be that they're waiting to have another quarter before they show things but it just seems a bit strange to me to be talking about how great it is but not showing how great it is not saying that it isn't a profitable avenue for the company but i have some curious unsurety is that even a word about the the, the numbers it, it, they, they must be at least good enough for amc because they're planning on expanding not only into newer stores but uh into candy as it were but i i don't know if it was as good as adam aaron is saying it is wouldn't you show the numbers and the last thing i wanted to bring up directly from my notes from the earnings call was that I'm very happy to see that Adam Aaron is starting to back away from the expansion that he's been doing. The expansion that I'd argue got him into this position to begin with in the post-COVID era. The company got over leveraged as he tried to rapidly expand AMC with a bloated balance sheet that ended up weighing heavily on the company and still harms it to this day. Instead, the number one item on their list is fixing their deferred maintenance issues and then looking at refurbishing their already established theaters before they even begin to think about expansion, which is the path that AMC should be going. They are the biggest theater chain in the United States. I'm not saying that there couldn't be markets it could expand into. It just has to be more careful about that expansion and maybe focus on the facilities that it already has, maintaining them, trimming and becoming leaner because the economic, the global macro outlook right now, and the fact that we are more than likely staring in the face of a recession. What we track at Quill is not seasonally adjusted continuing claims. These are the number of individuals who have applied for jobless benefits. Those are your initial claimants and been approved. So they're the ones who are collecting unemployment. And right now, and in April, and in May, and in June, economists call one month a potential aberration, three months is a trend. And this is impossible to see on the screen, I understand, but that green line across the top shows you that for three months in a row, 90% of the US population has been living in a state with rising continuing claimants. Uh, temporary workers are a subset of professional business services, which is enormous, uh, an enormous proportion of the overall jobs market. That one you can see in part because of temporary workers, in part because the services economy is slowing down, as I talked about in a video yesterday. Professional business services employment growth has slowed way down. The three month rate of change as of July was just 0.3%. And you could see when it was started, it really began to slow down with everything else in late 2022. So again, we see the consistent early stage recession signal here where it's not, we don't just go right into mass layoffs and firing everybody. Employment growth slows way down, especially in this cyclical services industry. And it just kind of flatlines for a while until the labor hoarding ends 
businesses decide they've had enough, they can't wait long enough, that's when it really happened. That's why I'm saying, or and have been saying through this video, that I don't see AMC's recovery being fully complete until 2025 at the later end of Adam Aaron's projections because 2024 is not going to be pretty. And I don't say those things just to be a downer, especially on a day like this for AMC shareholders where there's at least some beacon of a light at the end of the tunnel. But you gotta keep reality in mind. You gotta keep understanding that yes, this was a good moment, this little beacon of hope, but there's still a long ways to go with this company. It's got a large debt load. It still has back owed leases from COVID. It likely has a writer and actor strike that's going to continue for the foreseeable future. I believe the last one was six months uh, at the longest end that it went. And then we've got headwinds that are economic headwinds. It is going to continue to be very tough out there for AMC, very tough for shareholders. And you just gotta own that reality. It's not saying that things can't get better, but you need to understand completely the risks with uh, the position that you're currently in. And with that, that'll be the end of the video, and I'll catch you folks again next time.